It's always an interesting. It's taken from the book of 1 Samuel, and it's chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with you and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse, called Abinadab, made him pass before Samuel, and said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by, and he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass for before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all of thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him and we will not sit down till he comes hither. And he sent him and brought him in. And now he was ruddy and without a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of the brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Here ended the lesson. So before we begin this morning, I want to say thank you to Darlene for giving your testimony this morning. Um, and I echo those sentiments. If you ever feel that you want to give your testimony, I will gladly step aside from the pulpit and let you talk about what God is putting upon your heart that day. So as we continue in our series, The Boot Camp for the Soul, today we will be talking about being redefined. We have seen the need for a change. We've hit the reset button and we should now be fully hydrated. So this week we'll talk about what it means to redefine who we are. And it's a good thing that we took last week to make sure that we are spiritually hydrated because the work of redefining who you are can be very draining. When I was a young man, probably in the ninth grade, I decided that I wanted to be one of the cool kids at school. Now, you probably know this is not just as easy as walking in and saying, hey, everyone, I'm a cool person. Look at me. And that decision was made twice as hard by the fact that I was new in town and I hadn't built up the relationships over a lifetime that the other kids had with one another. But I looked around and I thought, you know what I need to change? I need to change the way I dress. That's got to be the only thing that wasn't cool about me, right? 
So you see, I was still dressing the way the kids in Oklahoma did, which was not exactly the same way that the kids in Lewistown did. So I asked my mom to take me shopping, and she did. You guys know that if your 14-year-old reaches out to you and says, hey, can we go do something together? You want to jump at that chance every time you get it. And so we did, and she uh, bought me new clothes, uh, ones that were closer to the way that the cool kids at the school I was going to uh, dress now. So I thought I was set, I was ready. So the next school day I went in with my new duds on and I thought, man, everyone's gonna see how cool I am now. And you know, a funny thing happened to me and that is nothing. You see, nothing changed because of the clothes I was wearing. No one thought I was any cooler than they did in the past. I was still just me, dressed a little bit differently. My attempt to redefine who I was simply by changing my clothing was a complete and utter failure. Now, don't feel too bad for me. I eventually went back to wearing what I liked, and I found my group of people while I was in school. And I had a pretty good time once I realized I was happier being who I was instead of trying to change and be someone I wasn't for the wrong reasons. But we do this to ourselves all the time, right? We try to define or redefine who we are based on the most shallow of things. I need to have the right clothes, the right car, the right job. I need to be a member of this club or that club. I have to be a part of that team. Now, when you step back and you look at these things or you hear someone speak these words, doesn't that sound like a teenager is talking, right? That is how they define what they are or who they are. Wouldn't you think that adults would have grown out of the need to define themselves based on these shallow ideas? Well, I hope that you have, but I think that we can all fall prey to that trap if we are not careful with how we define ourselves. So if you have found your life lacking, if you have been chasing the wrong things, if you have been looking for something more fulfilling, maybe today is the day to redefine yourself. And maybe you're thinking, I like who I am. No need to redefine who I am. Well, the really interesting thing is, no matter how we define ourselves, no matter how we see ourselves, God sees something more. And we see that in our scripture for today. We find Samuel being called to anoint a new king of the people of Israel. Now you need to understand that King Saul was still very much alive when David was anointed. But Saul had made mistakes and that had forced Samuel to seek out another person to become king. God leads Samuel to the house of Jesse. His sons are presented to Samuel. He sees a tall, strapping young man, and he thinks, okay, this is the guy. Go ahead and go get me the oil. We're done here. But God tells him, no, it isn't this one. And then the other sons of Jesse pass by Samuel, and each time Samuel thinks, Okay, it's this one, right, God? But God says, no, it is none of these. So when they are done, Samuel is confused, and he asks Jesse, do you have another son by chance? And Jesse says, well, yeah, the youngest one, but he's out keeping the sheep. And so Samuel says, you need to go and bring him. And they bring David in to meet Samuel. And then God tells him, this one. This is the one. Now, where all of us would have seen just a young shepherd, and though he is described as a handsome young man, but still just a young shepherd, a nobody really, God saw a king. And not just any king, but the great King David. You see, God sees more than just what the world sees. He sees the heart of people. And when the world would have defined David as just a nobody, God redefined him as a king. He didn't just see a young man with nice eyes. He didn't just see the little runt of the litter. 
He saw what David would be. He redefined that life of what a little shepherd could be. How many times in your life have you been defined as a nobody? Now I'm guessing that it's happened to you a few times. Well, guess what? You are not a nobody. You are a child of God. You are someone that God loves and wants to be with. And that doesn't sound like a nobody to me. Now, how often have we allowed this church and the people of this church to be defined as a little country church? Now, I know that I am guilty of this myself. You see, the second question that you're asked as a pastor when you meet other pastors is this. First is, oh, what's your name? The second is, where are you serving? And so the easiest way to explain to people who are not from the area is for me to say, oh, I'm serving at two little country churches outside of Sunbury, between Sunbury and Danville. But here's the thing. We are not just a little country church. At least that is not how God wants us to define ourselves. You see, God wants us to define ourselves as his people doing his work. There is nothing little about that. Sure, we might not have 500 people in service every week, but we are told that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, then he is there as well. Well, it is impossible for us to be a little country church when the creator of all things is here amongst us. You see, God wants us to redefine how we see ourselves. He wants us to be used to be something greater than we ever thought we could be. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Pastor, that is a lovely idea. I hope that you all redefine who you are, but I am who I am. I cannot change because of my past. No one will ever let me forget who I used to be and how I used to define myself. I am constantly reminded of the mistakes that I have made. But let me tell you another story of someone that God called to be redefined. Now, his name was Saul. Not the Saul that was king while, uh, before David. This Saul lived around the time of Jesus. And this Saul was a devout Jew. He was a man that did everything that he could in order to follow the teachings of the Torah. Saul was so devout that he found, when he found out there were groups of people that were meeting and saying they have seen the Messiah and they are now following his teachings, he was furious at the blasphemy that they were saying. So angry that it became his mission to find those people, drag them out of their hiding places, haul them out to be tortured, beaten, and killed. He sounds like a great guy, doesn't he? Well, God decided that he wanted to redefine Saul. So much so that he sent the resurrected Jesus to meet Saul on the road to Damascus. Now this man, this destroyer of Christians, he gets to meet Jesus? Well, perhaps it was because it took something so dramatic to turn Saul around. Now you probably do know the rest of the story. Saul has his name changed to Paul. And he goes on to help found churches and spread the gospel of Jesus. Talk about being redefined by God. So how does this apply to the feeling that you cannot be redefined? Well, I know that we feel like we can't escape who we used to be. We feel like the things that we've done are too much for God to forgive. But if a person who dedicated their life to finding, torturing, beating, and killing Christians can be saved and redefined by God and then used to spread the gospel across the known world, guess what? God can redefine you as well. On a more human level, I want you to think about this. You see, Paul had to face the people that he once persecuted. He had to be willing and go to those people and say, listen, I am sorry, but God has redefined who I am and I am not living that life that I was before. I am now living for him. And if Paul can do that, 
Can we not go and face the people in our lives that want to define us by our past and say, that isn't who I am anymore? God has called and redefined me, and now I am living for him. Finally, I'll leave you with this thought. See, we are often scared when God wants to redefine us. We are comfortable being who we are. And we feel like we're not good enough to meet what it is that God wants us to be. Now, in my own life, I have felt this so very strongly. I have been terrified by the fact that God wanted to redefine me and make me a pastor in a church. I fought for years saying, God, I am not good enough. I am not learned enough. My past is too checkered. I'm not holy enough to lead your people. Please stop putting this upon my heart. I am very happy being defined as your follower, but do not make me a person that has to lead as well. I have poured out the lists of my shortcomings to God more than you can possibly imagine. But one of the greatest things that anyone has ever said to me is this. You know, when God calls you, he already knows where you're lacking. But he calls you anyways. You see, that is the truth behind God calling you to redefine yourself as well. He already knows your shortcomings. He doesn't care about them. He wants you to be his anyways. Now, how reassuring is that? You see, he knows that you have failed. He knows that you're probably going to fail again. But he still wants you to redefine who you are and follow him. Now, knowing that information, doesn't it seem a little easier to let God redefine who you are? So my challenge for you this week is to pick one thing about your life and then let God redefine it for you. Either give it up or give it to God. Amen.